Good morning, FCC. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Now, I don't like to make anyone feel awkward. I usually don't do these type of things. But just by a show of hands, how many of you fell asleep before midnight? This guy right here. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Anyone stay up all night? There's my group right here. So just so you guys know, a whole bunch of junior high kids right here uh, went to Little Galley and stayed up all night. So if you hear a ringing of snores... It's Buck. No, I'm just kidding. Nah, I wouldn't do that. Hey, would you stand with us as we begin our worship this morning? Can't wait to start a whole new year with you guys as we worship God and just come to know him. my life 
God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds a victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, 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 we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from the grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. 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 You may be seated.
and that's good stuff. Uh, I, I've watched it like three times this morning. So uh, it was a short night. Happy New Year, right? And, but man, even off of a short night, like that just kind of gets me going. And uh, I'm convinced as much as ever after uh, 2022 and, and calling it a year uh, this, this past night that, uh, man, um, we, all of the things that we do, we still have the greatest message ever told to share. And um, that's such a motivator. It's so good. I, I have some really great memories from 2022. I skied my way into the year uh, with our high school students at the beginning of the year. I've got a picture here. Uh, I can still do this, you know. Um, it didn't end well. Watch this. Listen, we leave at 4 o'clock today for another one of those trips, and I'm going to land on my skis this time. So, yeah. Look, I'm, that's, a, that's the thing. Like, in 2022, I'm like 40 pounds lighter. I'm in a little bit better shape, and I'm going to land it. So, um, listen, I got to baptize my third daughter this year or be a part of that. I got to dance on this stage at a volunteer appreciation night with the Domino's gang, okay? Like, you want to talk about highlights? Man, if you know, you know. I'm crazy thankful that I get to work with this group. We got a picture here. This is our ministry staff. And, man, I love each one of them. I love everything that they bring to our team. I love uh, the rest of our staff and our support staff. And uh, we had some new additions. Lisa's been here for just over a year as our office manager, and she has been awesome. And if you haven't gotten to know Lisa yet or met her, you should do that. And what I'm going to do real quick before we move on is uh, we're just going to say a prayer for her family. Uh, her father, Chuck, many of you know Chuck Reesh, he passed away this weekend. Uh, and I know Carolyn and, and Lisa, and they would, they would all appreciate our prayers. So let's, let's pray for them real quick before we, we move on. God, um, thank you so much for Chuck. Thank you for his life, um, for his legacy. I thank you for his family and, and for Lisa and, and what she brings to our church and, and for Carolyn, God, and, and what she brings to our church and Father, I just pray that you would be near to them, and that, you would, uh, that your presence would be known and felt and bring love and encouragement and support. We pray that for many others right now. God, I know who um, are fresh off of, uh, off of losses. Father, and for those who um, are sick and are struggling, and God, we just pray uh, that as a church family, a light in this world, God, that we can bring your presence with us um, to love well, to encourage and support well. Um, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we also, uh, this year, added a new preschool helper in Bright Beginnings Preschool. Uh, her name is Andrea McVeigh, and man, Andrea and Amy are rocking it. Uh, at Bright Beginnings, you know, the, uh, currently, currently we have 15 four-year-olds and 22 three-year-olds uh, attending Bright Beginnings. So uh, that's awesome. 37 kids uh, were packed, and uh, it's it's great. The young families that we're able to um, spend time with, connect with, and share the message of Jesus with through bright beginnings, and so I'm thankful for Amy and Andrea and the work that they do, and um, man, we, we added some really great new ministries this year, uh, a couple of new ones that, uh, that stick out in my mind. We added a men's Bible study 
uh, that has been great, and I have just enjoyed uh, being at the one on in midweek on Wednesday evenings, um, sharing with those guys and, and growing with them, and I know uh, Travis has been teaching that also on Sunday mornings, and so there's two opportunities available men every week. You can see it on your bulletin this morning, and we'd love to have you join us and, and to grow with us in the Word. Our women's study is, is rocking and rolling, but we also added uh, FCA this year, along with some, some other churches and leaders in our community. Uh, it's high school every other week, and um, it has been incredible uh, to see, you know, some weeks anywhere from 40 to 60 high schoolers come like 45 minutes early for school to be there, to fellowship together, to study together. Yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. And there are so many members of our community, members of our church who have volunteered and provided breakfast for the kids and in different ways like that. So thank you. Thank you if you've been a part of that. And, and would you just pray? Pray for some of those ministries, but pray for uh, the ministries that I know might start in 2023 that we haven't even thought of. But God's ahead of us, and he knows. And uh, as a staff, we're just praying, man, that God would give us wisdom, uh, that his Holy Spirit would lead us, and that, that we would, would, would identify what those things are, and that we would do them well for his kingdom. As I was reflecting, I also reflected and realized that um, we faced a lot of hard moments in 2022 as well. We lost, um, we lost some loved ones, and we faced tragedy as a community. And as I reflected on that, a scripture came to mind uh, that um, is celebration worthy. It's from James chapter 1, verse 12, and it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. I'm going to maybe uh, shift those words a little bit. Um, blessed is the church that remains steadfast under trial. You know, it, Mark and I, we, we talk about this often just because we have so many friends in ministry that, um, that we fellowship with, that we keep up with, and uh, man, it... The last three years have been hard on churches, and I just want you to know how incredibly blessed we are um, to see our church continuing to grow, to see people, like as we sang earlier, and we just watched that stones are, we're, we're still seeing stones rolled away. Like we're seeing graves opened up, and people who are, are, are knowing Jesus for eternity and we get to be a part of that. And it's incredible. Steadfast, steady, consistent in faith and faithful. Man, that is that is celebratory. A church like that. You know, as I think about celebrating FCC and, and what we've been doing this past year, we didn't turn inward in the face of trial. That's what I find really not just not just inspiring, but like it's just so obvious as I thought about this past year and some of the most significant things, uh, like as a church in the, in the face of different trials and things that were going on, we did not turn inward. We did not focus on ourselves and our pain and our hardship, but we chose to look up and out. And I'm so thankful for that. As a church, we gave like, 30% of like our overall budget number to missions in 2022. That's incredible. It's incredible. It, uh, that included uh, an entire Easter weekend offering that we gave away to support Ukrainian refugees in Poland. And we didn't just give money, we gave partnership, we gave prayer. Uh, we followed it with a relationship. W watch this video that was made about that. My name is Michelle Reynolds, and I attend church at First Christian Church, Decatur, Illinois, where I serve on the admin committee. 
One of the things I was most concerned about before I left, and one of the hard things about deciding to go, was making sure that I wasn't a tourist to the refugees' misery. And it wasn't that at all, and it surprised me. When we got there, overwhelmingly, the groups would be so thankful and would just thank us over and over again for being there. And I realized that our presence among them was bearing witness to what they've done. And it allows us to retell their stories and to say their names. And I think it was important and our presence encouraged them. One of the speakers that we heard said, we prefer the type of giving and the follow-up that your group is doing to even the billions of dollars that are sent by government that sometimes we never see. On Monday, when we were at the North Church, we met Dmitry, uh, and he was a pastor from Ukraine uh, who had been arrested. Uh, he was imprisoned for eight days, and he shared a lot about his experience there, uh, was able to tell us about things that he was hearing in other cells and just the, really the environment that he was in. And to be able to share uh, I, one of the things he said that impacted me a lot, he said, uh, I've lost a lot uh, and throughout my life. Uh, I, I'm used to losing, he said. Um, but he's just so focused on going back and he's so focused on serving those people, including the Russian people. Uh, one of the things that he, he told us was that 80% of the ministers in Russia are Ukrainian. And just thinking about the ramifications of that and how that plays out, that the very people who are oppressing their nation are the people that they're going to tell about Jesus, um, just really impacted me. I would say that I was profoundly changed by this trip. It's been difficult coming home, and it's hard moving around in a world that doesn't physically and emotionally and spiritually understand what we saw that was happening over there. And because of that, it is an honor to carry the weight of what they've gone through. And I think it's exactly what Christ called us to do to bear each other's burdens. One of the ways in which we as a congregation and the other congregations who joined us have been helping uh, with the Ukrainian refugees in Poland is a variety of different ways, but one is obviously with children. Mothers are arriving with their kids, the fathers, their husbands, their older brothers, their grandpas are left behind because of the war. And these mothers arrive with trying to figure out what am I gonna do with my children if I'm gonna get a job and find a way to make a living? So there are, we as a congregation, we have funded pre-K centers all across the country. And the kids heard, in one of them, heard we were coming. And they graciously made these cards for us, which are, I mean, look at that. Isn't that sweet? The sad part is we were told that some of the children in the pre -K, that pre-K area, we, that particular pre-K we were in that day, some of the kids, their fathers had been killed in action, and yet the mothers and the authorities didn't yet have the ability or the means with which to tell the kids that daddy was dead. I, it's, it's just, it just tears, tears my heart out. Thank you. Thank you for sending us. Thank you for um, being the hands and feet of Jesus in the form of food and housing and care and love being extended. You're making a difference, and I'm really grateful for that. I haven't stood uh, with many mothers who I couldn't communicate with uh, verbally that knew their husband was dead and weren't able to tell their children that. And, and people who are living with that and, and, and still to this day. And what I'm thankful for is, you know, I look at, I look at opportunities like that, you know, that, that we, through, through, the genero through your generosity, through this steadfastness that I was talking about, we were also able to, to give $50,000 to LCU to say, look, uh, equipping future ministers is 
a core value of God's church. And it is, a, it is something we value, and we want to partner in that happening. And so, you know, it, it, being able to do that this fall and, you know, the, another opportunity that we saw was uh, a partnership with a sister church up the road in Clinton, Illinois, and being able to, to love them and, and Mark and I getting to go preach there some. We were able to help them hire a great interim preacher, and as a leadership, we get to continue to meet with them and read and study with them and fellowship with them once a month and, and, and see growth through that. We, a little over a year ago, we did a survey that said of things that we were good at as a church and bad at as a church. We were struggling with loving relationships. Well, God's been moving. And I'm emotional because of love. And I think you are too. And I think he has just upped. <laughs> He's upped our game as a church uh, when it comes to loving not just, not just people in our church, not just our neighbors, but like a heart for the world like his. Like if we grow in that, man. We have two new apprentice elders that came on this year, Jeff Denning and Josh Shorey, and I'm excited to learn and grow with those guys. I, our, our ministries are so blessed. Our staff continues to look ahead and to pray for God's leading in new ways to reach people with the life-changing message of Jesus. That is our mission statement as a church. I'm as committed to it as ever, and my, my whole purpose today was not just to celebrate, but to hopefully inspire your commitment to that as well. Just a shot in the arm, you know? One way that we're going to make a, a, a push for this in 2023 as we look ahead then, as you walked in today, maybe you saw that table in the back. If you didn't, you could turn around and look at it right now. It's straight back the middle aisle, and there's, there's a whole bunch of books on that table. And the title of the book is Core 52. And here's what we're committing to as a church with this this year. It is designed for 52 weeks worth of devotions, 52 weeks worth of quiet time for you that is intentionally focused on like the foundational 52 scriptures in the Bible. And it's not only getting you, um, I guess, like, aware of those, but memorizing them. And it's a commitment to strengthening, as the, this slide says, strengthening our biblical IQ together. And so I, my, my challenge for you is, would you be a part of that with us? I am, one, one way I'm doing that, I'm so committed to God's word. I'm so committed to us um, growing in, in knowledge and wisdom of God's word together that we're going to spend this whole year preaching these themes in our sermons and putting resources in our small group leaders' hands to continue. I wanted to throw it, but I won't. So, um, but yeah, uh, we're we're committed. We're all in on this, and it's going to make some things a little bit different. Um, you know, it, the way that we would normally structure uh, a year calendar with sermons and different things, and you know, the way that it, it sometimes is just so nice when we can have these four or five week uh, series that are centered around holidays like Easter and Christmas and stuff. But I, I just want you to know this year is going to be different. Um, and at first, I was like, man, that's hard. I, do I want to do that? But then on the flip side of that, I thought, you know what? Like that, Maybe that's just exactly the kind of thing we need to do. 
get a little bit out of our comfort zone with God's word and commit to something like this and go in where we're going to follow God's word, not our calendar, not our holidays, and not our culture. And so my challenge to you is we have invested in getting these. You can take one today for free. If, if that's what you'd like to do. There's also a bucket back there where you can, even if you don't take one, but you go, you know what? Like, I want to invest in someone else doing that. You can put money in the bucket for that to help cover these books. But because we're going to make sure that every one of them gets used by someone. Um, I, I will ask, like, if, if you're going to do it and, and, like, husbands and wives, maybe you take one at first today, just to make sure we've got enough. We could always order more, but I want to make sure everybody's got them as we get started here. You can order them as well uh, on Amazon or, you know, mo most booksellers online. You could probably find it, but, man, I want to ask you to commit to it. And, and there are unique things you can do with it as well this year. So here's one of the things I did. Um, leading my family and wanting to do better at that, um, they have Core 52 Family Edition. And it follows the same journey, but it's set up to involve your kids in that. So we're going to do, I'm going to do Core 52 uh, individually, but then as a family every night, we're going to do Core 52 with our kids. And, and we're going to follow this. And so I don't have any copies of this, but like I said, you can get it on Amazon or you can talk to me and I'll help you get one. But man, I, would you pray about being a part of this journey with us this year? And and. We're not going to make this something that it's, it's difficult to come in on. It's difficult to be a part of. It, this isn't something that like, oh, man, yesterday builds on today, builds on tomorrow. Last week builds on this week. And so I'm behind. You can jump in at any point. So it's something that even throughout the year, I want us to continue to revisit and plug like, hey, do you have a neighbor or family member? Or somebody else that you can say, hey, would you join me on this? You know, we started out, and I've been at, at it, and, and you can jump right in and be a part of this. And you, you haven't missed anything. But, man, I, my prayer is that this would up our knowledge of God, our wisdom. You know, that he would impart wisdom to us through it, but that it would make us better at our mission. And so uh, those books are back there. I'd, I'd love for you to take one, and I'd love for you to be a part of that because, like I said, I, I'm committed. I'm in, and I know that our staff is in. It's something that we've talked about and prayed about, and, and I hope you can be in with us. And here's, what, here's why. I got this quote. Uh, Corey Ten Boom said this. She said, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. And that's just a great reminder going into a new year. I am not afraid to trust 2023. I'm going to call it the year of Jordan. <laughs> 2023, I, I'm not. I'm kidding. I'm going to call it the year of the Bible in our church. Uh, it, no, here's the thing. I, am, I will not be afraid stepping in. I will not be anxious stepping into a new year because God knows what I don't. He knows what we don't. And if we're going to celebrate our steadfastness, you better believe we're going to celebrate his. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And so while it may look different in a new year, different isn't necessarily bad. Um, we're going to be about it. I'll, I'll leave you this. As the praise team uh, prepares to continue to lead us in worship and celebration as we continue to worship together and remember Jesus and communion and, and, and in other ways. I, I, I want to read this scripture from Matthew chapter 6. In like manner to the scriptures I just read. Therefore I tell you, Jesus said, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, 
nor about your body or what you will put on. It is not life more than food, the body more than clothing. Look at, look at the birds of the air. They, ne- they neither soar, sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. Do not be anxious about 2023. It will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus, thank you for these words. Thank you for being so steadfast in your commitment and love um, to us. God, I pray that we would be able to enter this new year starting today with the attitude that this will be the best year yet. God, I pray that this would be true of us. We, we take these books uh, alongside your word. We, we want to hide your word in our hearts this year. We want to be committed to your word because we're seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness this year. And the good, God, you will add. In Jesus' name, amen.
And as we hold the communion, uh, I just want to take a few moments in prayer uh, between you and God. I just want to guide you through that. So first thing is uh, I want you to thank God for what he has done for you and in your life and thank him for all the blessings of this past year. there's something in your life that is just preventing you from being on fire for him? Could it be laziness, busyness, a sin that you can't get rid of? As we go into 2023, pray that God will take those away from you and that we will be a church that is on fire for him. you're anxious about, anything on your mind that you worry about, any type of depression that's going on in your life, lift those up to him and allow him to take those things. Finally, thank Jesus for his sacrifice for you on the cross, which gives you salvation and allows you to communicate to him through the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And together, let's take the bread in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And together, let's take the juice in remembrance of Christ's spilled blood. Father God, as we just commune with you this morning, as a new year passes and we make worldly resolutions, Father, I pray that you just put it on our heart to make spiritual resolutions. Father, that we can become so close to you that we can't help but talk about you, that we can't help but be different from the people around us. Father, I pray that we get rid of the lukewarm and maybe the feelings that guide us or the things of this world that guide us. And I just pray that we focus on you this year. That this year is finally the year that we give you everything. Because you deserve nothing less. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus and the sacrifice on the cross that gives us the hope and salvation and the joy that we can live with here until it's time to come home. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Take a look at our announcement video. Oh, hello there. My name is Colton Poston, and I am the celebrity guest for this week's announcements. 
Immediately after service today, there will be a small group leaders meeting. This Wednesday, the women's ministry will be resuming their Bible study, starting a new book. This Saturday at 7.30, the men's breakfast will be reconvening. Bring your feed bags, no silverware required. January 11th, we will be starting a new program called Grief Share. For more information, please contact the office. Sunday, January 8th, we will be starting a new Sunday School series led by Mark Weber through the book of Revelations. This will be at the 8 and 9 o'clock hours. A fun fact about me is I was once part of Illinois' oldest curling club. And now for your 2022 bloopers. Roll that big wheel. FCC. What? <laughs> Last and not least, I'm really excited about this volunteer appreciation banquet. March. <laughs> we have an amazing opportunity for grandparents, grandparents. Yeah, just take grandparents. Yep. 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 Okay. Grandparents. Here we go. <laughs> All of you grandparents. All you grandparents. <laughs> Let me just start over again. Okay. There is going to be an FCC Women's Christmas Party here at the church in the lobby on crap. <laughs> December 11th. Party here at the church in the lobby on December 3rd. Stop it. It's December 11th. Paul and lunch will be provided. During that meeting, we'll be discussing the. <laughs> the announcements are over. The night is almost over. Thanks for letting us hang out with your kids. We are currently evaluating whether we, gosh dang it. Hi, we're checking the lighting today, so. A Thanksgiving dinner following second service. Everyone is invited. And I just realized I forgot to date. <laughs> That's fine. Well, be ready. If you, <laughs> almost. <laughs> if you, I was going to say that's our last. Paul, after second service, join us as we. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we're trying to stay away from chocolate chips or from brownies because we want to make sure we have just a wide variety of cookies there for you to choose from. We're trying to stay away from chocolate chip or brownies just so we have a wide variety of cookies there. And. Oh no! I was so confident. I was like, this is it. And I stopped. My brain stopped. Silent auction, and that money will also go towards relief. Um, this will start at. They needed a savior. The people knew they needed a savior. I just go. Try it one more time. Next Sunday, we'll be having all. No. Uh, 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 I don't know where that came from. And those are all your announcements. Have a great week. <laughs> you can cut that. Now, what you didn't know is we had people uh, standing around watching, and anyone that laughed, we wrote your name down, and you are on the schedule to do an announcement. <laughs> Those are much, much harder than you think. Uh, as we end our service this morning, just want to talk about our tithes and offerings. Our boxes are up front and back as you leave the auditorium. If you're watching online, you can give at fccmoinkwood.org, or you can text give to the number on the screen. Would you stand with us as I pray over our offering and end our service? Father God, we just thank you so much. For allowing us to be here this morning to worship you. And Father, I just pray that you just continue to work on our hearts. Father, that the best is truly yet to come, not because of anything that we can do, but because of what you can do through us. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. that the future
future is brighter. I believe in his promise for me. I believe that he's working and he's not done. The best, the best is yet to come. I know he makes the anxious courageous. I know he makes the doubters believe. I know he won't stop working because he's not done. The best, the best is yet to come. I've got this hope in my soul. second chance I believe he works all things for good I believe that he's working and he's not done the best the best is yet to come I've got this hope in my soul I know you won't let me go FCC, have a great week and a great new year.